Hi, good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Amdahl, and this is episode 595. If you're joining me live, please say hello. Would love to hear from you. If you have any questions for me, please always feel welcome to ask. And we'll just wait a few seconds here for people to pop over. Hi, Julie and Naomi and Lisa, Patricia, Nora, Sue. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Margaret. Happy hump day. Yes, it is Wednesday. Happy Wednesday as well. Hi, Stacy and Lisa and Christine. Hi, Cindy. And uh, good morning, Judy and Diane. I had the strangest thing happen this morning. I was blow drying my hair to get ready for the show. Hi, Joe and Sharon and Carrie, Constance, Judy, Jackie, Jane. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Michelle. Good morning, Grace. And so I was blow drying my hair and what I normally do, hi, Kathy, is I curl my bangs under a little bit to get a little bend in them, but then I blow dry them straight down to take most of the bend back out. I feel like a perfectly rolled under bang is very 80s or 90s or something like that and I just want a very slight bend so I roll them and then flatten them after that so as I'm blow drying my hair straight down my bangs hit my eyeballs like the edges of my bangs I didn't close my eyes quickly enough and they banged my eyeballs not my eyelids my eyeballs and I'm having a hard time recovering from it I already had on mascara which is not good either <laughs> it's not good to have any issues with your eyes once you put makeup on but I'm having a little hard time focusing right now because they still hurt um, I may have to end up putting on glasses but I can kind of see the screen <laughs> Yeah, it still hurts, Nora. Yes, uh, it's like someone gave me little tiny punches in my eyeballs <laughs> this morning. Um, really yucky, but uh, hi, Sylvia. Good morning, everybody. I've got lots to show you today. So first of all, I, uh, hi, Barbara. Good morning. I released both of these new patterns last night so the paloma crochet pullover and the trixie crochet pullover are both live both download patterns on my website they both have lots of chart they both have two charts this one has a chart to show you how to put the whole piece together it's so easy to make this top it's not a top down increasing it's works straight and even but instead of having to sew the front and back together or the sleeves together the front is done in all one piece or the back is done in one piece and then the front is picked up from the shoulder edge and work to the front and then once you get past the arms you work in the round so it's all made in one piece uh, really wonderful easy construction and uh, this one's done in be so fine yarn this one is a top down raglan and it's done in be so sporty bling yarn i did share yarn uh substitution information for both patterns so not only do you see the yardage that i always show for all the sizes they both come in five sizes as well um uh, what was i going to say but i not only show you the actual yardage for substituting for any of uh, the yarns uh, any yarn but then i tell you specifically how many balls for the yarns that i used and then the yarns that I carry that are the same weight, that might have slightly different yardage, I share how many balls of those as well. Having said that though, because both of these are using um, large, especially this one, because this is using a larger hook for the yarn, so this is a number one fingering weight yarn, but still using a five millimeter crochet hook, gives you that light, loose, airy, drapey effect but very uh, sheer you could do this one in be so sporty yarn as well you would need to adjust your gauge figure out what size hook would give you the same gauge but this one is probably easy to substitute between the two yarns and i'd have to say that this one probably is as well but uh, to go down from sport weight to fingering weight but it's just about uh experimenting with your gauge anyway i also show you three different yarns in the same weight that you can work in either one so this one can be done in be so sporty bling gold or silver and be so sporty yarn 
This one uh, can be done. This one is done in Be So Fine yarn, but could also be done in Be So Fine bling or Be So Lush yarn. So lots of options, lots of color choices, lots of sizes available, great detailed charts, plus written instructions, and eventually there will be video tutorials as well. Does anybody have any questions before I tell you about something else? This is the Paloma pullover, and this is the Trixie pullover, and they're both uh, download patterns on my website right now. Hi, Rebecca, good morning. And I stepped outside of my head this morning and ended up taking some photos of me in both tops so that you can see them, but I was going to also stand up and try both of them on. I have a tank top underneath, so I don't care about taking it off in front of you. So this is the, <clears throat> this is the Paloma pullover and I'm wearing the size 36. So you can see wearing this, wearing it with negative ease, it is definitely more of a straight pullover. But if you wanted to use wear, and I would probably wear a 38 or a 40 if I was wearing something with zero, uh, with zero ease. I also think that if you size up on this top, you could get an amazing oversized top that could be a beach cover up or something that you belt. So I do think there's a lot of flexibility when you make something that has minimal shaping like this. With negative ease, it looks like a fitted top. And with positive ease, it could look more like an oversized pullover or beach cover up. And if you went a little oversized, you could definitely make it longer for a dress as well. Okay, so show you front and back. All right, and then we'll try on the other top. So that's the Paloma pullover. And wearing the wrong length tank top. It should probably be tucked in. <clears throat> All right, and this is the Trixie pullover. This one is in Be So Sporty Bling. This one you could definitely uh, add more length to make it a tunic or a dress and you could also adjust the sleeve length so it's a top-down raglan so if you stopped when you stop the yoke to start the body you could have cap sleeves from there and then you could also pick up and work in the round even in pattern to make the sleeves as long as you want i made my sleeves three-quarter length but you could make them short sleeves three-quarter you could make them full-length sleeves you could make them bracelet length you have you could do anything you want in respect to sleeve length because it's top down and the same goes for the body you could keep it this length which is about you know hip bone length or you could make it longer for a tunic or longer for a dress as well and I do think that you could play around with your gauge and maybe do this one and be so fine for a thinner style sweater as well. So does anybody have any questions about either of these? Yeah, they do look great with jeans. I'm just feeling, you know, a little self-conscious about my weight this morning. So when I feel self-conscious about my weight, I like to wear dark layers underneath my knit and crochet items. But you will notice that sometimes I feel more comfortable in my skin and I think white layers are really attractive too and I think they're I think lighter layers underneath are really great for showing off curves but um, today I'm feeling more self-conscious so I thought darker layers might be a little more um, flattering but they'd be amazing with lighter color under layers too my goodness uh, yeah so I put this one on the black mannequin but you on the white mannequin it would probably pop it on both so you can see all right what color what color did I use for each this is um, a color that's no longer in stock or is done in be so sporty bling in color moonstone bring what but mentioning yarn color I have something else very exciting to show you this morning I have guess how many new colors I have available in be so sporty yarn this morning I think I have more new colors to show you this morning than I've ever shown you at one time. Grace Guest 18, you are so close, Grace. I have 16 new colors to show you this morning in Be So Sporty Yarn. 
This is so exciting. You are going to love, love, love these colors. So I'm gonna go through and show them to you in the Twisted Hank, and then I'll open them up and we can look at them opened up as well. So are you ready? 16 new colors of Be So Sporty yarn, which is my number two sport weight, 100% bamboo yarn, 325 yards per four ounce Hank. And I have tons and tons and tons of patterns, including you could definitely do these tops in this yarn too. So let's start with Mermaid. We have Mermaid 04, which is our newest in the Mermaid collection. We have hibiscus, which has a soft, warm peach and yellow. Oh, mermaid is turquoise and blue and green and just gorgeous. And then we have rainbow sherbet, which has a soft yellow, a soft mint green, and a soft peach. A lot of these colors look so good together, too. And we have harbor fog, which is a very pale, light, silvery sage green. And then we always have Chantilly Lace, which would look great combined with any of these colors. And we have Rose Blush. It's a really pretty pinky rose. And Tropical Hot Coral, which is a beautiful coral with some pink in it. And then we have Sea Glass, which is a beautiful turquoise and silver with some white blended through. The colors just blend into each other and go to soft white in the middle, just stunning. And then we have charcoal. Beautiful, beautiful dark neutral. And we have Bahama blue. Sandcastle, this is the color that I'm making that knit sweater in right now, Sandcastle. And we have classic blue, just so pretty. It's brighter than navy and oh, just so gorgeous, so beautiful. And then we have chocolate truffles. That would be an amazing everyday vest, right? And then we have million dollar red, which I know everybody loves, me too. And we have amethyst purple. And we have hibiscus. One of my favorite hibiscus uh, colorways is the yellow flower with the orange center. So this is definitely a very warm yellow to orange. And then we have fern forest, which has that beautiful lush green, like the fern behind me right here and all the highlights of the sun hitting the fern leaves. Just like you see behind me, look at how beautifully it matches my fern. I love that about this colorway. Just incredible. Isn't that cool that I can put it next to the fern without special lighting and go here. It's that colorway. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to set these down again so that I can open them up. Did I say two hibiscus? I meant one of them's plumeria. So the lighter one here, I meant to call this one plumeria. This is a soft yellow and soft peach, which reminds me of my plumeria tree and other plumeria. I do a lot of bike riding in my neighborhood and there's so many different colors of plumeria in the neighborhood. And just the yellow was a starting base because that's the color in my backyard. So we'll start there. So this is plumeria. And hey, let's show it next to hibiscus since I said them incorrectly. They actually look really pretty together. And then this is hibiscus which is a deeper, warmer yellow and orange, like a fiery blend, but okay. So we'll put those on my arm. Where do we go next? Let's go to, this is rosebud or rose blush. It's a beautiful pink, mauvey pink rose color, really pretty and soft. Then we have sandcastle. So beautiful. And then we have Rainbow Sherbert, which is a super soft pale yellow, pale mint green, and a pale rosy pink. 
I think a lot of these colors would look so pretty together. And then we have Tropical Hot Coral, which is a coral that has some pink tones in it. Really flattering color for most people to wear. <clears throat> and then we have Sea Glass. This one goes from that silver gray to mint, or like a, a soft turquoise, and then fades to white. So pretty. And then we have the newest mermaid colorway. This is Mermaid 04, and we've got we've got some turquoise and light blue and maybe a soft teal and a little tiny bit of white blended in there as well. It's subtle, but there are some shadows and highlights in it. It's so pretty. And again, looks so pretty with the other colors too. <clears throat> then we have Harbor Fog. It's a light silvery sage green. Definitely very, it all reminds, all nature inspired colors. And very summery and oh, so pretty. And this is Fern Forest, which is like an emerald green with some highlights of lighter greens in there. Really, really pretty. And subtle color changes, but very pretty. And then we have Bahama Blue is such a cheerful color like the sky or, or crystal clear water. And then we have classic blue. So to complement all of those light colors, we did some darker colors for contrast, which would be great for stripes or for ruffles or edgings or color work. It's always great to have contrast with some darker colors with the light ones. This is classic blue. That would also just be <laughs> incredible on its own. I mean, just any top, any shawl in that color is just amazing. And then we have charcoal. I love this color too. It's definitely lighter than soft black, but if you're a fan of the shale colorway, it definitely has that same kind of vibe. It's definitely a definitely a dark, cool neutral. And then to contrast the cool neutral, we did a warm dark neutral, and that is chocolate truffles, which is a beautiful chocolate brown with some highlights and lowlights in there for that subtle color variation. Oh, we should have put it next to Sandcastle too. Let's pull Sandcastle out. Look how pretty those look together too. Still, still very beachy too. And then we have Amethyst. which is darker and cooler, a cooler color than Passionate Plum. That's so beautiful, my goodness. Then we have Million Dollar Red, which is just, just like my favorite color of lipstick and nail polish, that beautiful, perfect, deep red. And then Chantilly Lace, which is always a great pop of neutral for any type of color work with all of these colors. So now I'll transfer them back to my other arms to go over their names one more time. Got Chantilly Lace, Million Dollar Red, let me get rid of that, um, Amethyst, Chocolate Truffles, all right, I mean, even, even the neutrals, the darker neutrals look beautiful next to each other too. Then we have Sandcastle, but honestly, I don't think there's a bad combination in this mix. I think any of these colors would look beautiful together. This is Charcoal. Classic Blue. Oh, 
Bahama Blue. Fern Forest. Harbor Fog. Plumeria. Hibiscus. Rose Blush. Someone just asked me to mix some colors together. I'll take requests for that after I go through them all. Rainbow Sherbet. Tropical Hot Coral. Have sea glass and mermaid 04. So yeah, I someone asked for some to see some combinations together. So I'll just need to just give me any requests and I will uh, pull them together. Pull them together. We pick two or three color combinations, whatever you want to see together. <sighs> sea glass is so pretty. I agree, Joe. I love that color. Uh, but they're all beautiful for different reasons. <laughs> um, I think the brown and the cream, I think we, so I'll show the brown, the browns and the cream together. Oops, let me get these off my arms too. Okay, so we'll grab Chantilly Lace and Sandcastle and Chocolate Truffles. Okay, so this is the first request. Chantilly Lace, Chocolate Brown, and uh, Sandcastle. Plumeria and Rainbow Sherbert. This is the next request. Whoopsie. Okay, the next request was Plumeria and Rainbow Sherbert. Okay, who else wants to see a combination together? Tropical Coral with Classic Blue. Um, I have actually done photo shoots with this color with dark denim like I'm wearing. So uh, the long sleeve Kimmy top pattern, if you look at the long sleeve version of the Kimmy top, I did that long sleeve version in Tropical Hot Coral and I wore it with dark denim. So if you wanted to see this color with dark denim, you could look up those photos. It looks really pretty together. But honestly, jeans look great with everything. So any of these colors would look great with a, den a dark blue. Hibiscus, Sandcastle, and blue together. Hibiscus, Sandcastle, and blue together. Like I said, I don't think that there's a combination that wouldn't work here, which is just so incredible <laughs> to me. But here we go. Here is Sandcastle, uh, Classic Blue, and hibiscus. Okay, mermaid and sea glass. Mermaid and sea glass. And there's a couple of reasons for asking and for asking to see the different colors together. There's a few things that you can learn from this. First, you can learn what colors match and you can learn the variations between the two colors too. So you might lean more towards one or the other if you're asking to see two colors that are similar, or you may be looking to combine colors. Either way, there's lots of reasons to ask and learn from seeing different colors put together. So this is Mermaid 04 and Sandcastle. I'm sorry, Mermaid 04 and Sea Glass. This is Be So Sporty Sport Weight Yarn. Yes, that's correct, Sabine. Okay, what else would anybody like to see together? Uh, you know what, we could put, uh, let's put Sherbert with that too, so you can see there's a lot of similar 
uh, similar tur pale turquoise mint green in these three. So you can see that it's in the Sherbert, it's in the Mermaid 04, and it's in the Sea Glass. Sea Glass and Harbor Fog. Okay. All right, so here is Harbor Fog. And here is sea glass. Coral, amethyst, and sandcastle. Coral, amethyst, and sandcastle. Oh, wow. Coral and amethyst are already unbelievable together. Uh, coral and amethyst. Look at those two. Just already that looks stunning. And then we'll add sandcastle to the mix. So you could do motif projects like the Majestic Skies uh, crochet motif shawl that uses, I think, four or five colors. That would be incredible for mixing colors. Or you could take any motif project and, you know, do certain rounds in different colors. There's, or you could change color within any pattern, too. Bahama blue, dark blue, and Chantilly. That's going to be pretty. Bahama. Like I said, they're all pretty. <laughs> Bahama blue... Chantilly and classic. You guys are remembering the color names very well too. I know sometimes people we've had struggles where people have tried to describe the color without saying the name I said, but you guys remembered them very well this morning. Okay. Very, very pretty. Look at that. Chantilly lace, Bahama blue, and classic blue. Yeah, the combinations are limitless, Klein. I don't think there's I don't think you could put together oh, here, let's pull let's pull charcoal into here too. Charcoal looks beautiful in there as well. Even put it on the white side or the chantilly side. <laughs> that's a good, that's funny, Twanisha. <laughs> All right, what else? Oh, you know, we didn't pull out um, rose blush with anything. I think rose blush would be so pretty with so many of these two. Oh, look at that. Rose blush, Bahama blue, and Chantilly. That's gorgeous, too. Actually, let's pull that charcoal back in. That's beautiful. So rose blush looks great with charcoal, with Bahama blue, with... Um, Chantilly, it probably looks amazing with um, the classic blue, too. Yeah, the rose blush looks great with so many of them, too. Probably looks great with um, Sandcastle. Yes. <laughs> and it probably looks great with Chocolate Truffles. Yes. And uh, I think that they, that the rose blush and the tropical hot coral are actually really pretty together too. Which you may not think to put those two together, but I think they're pretty too. It looks great with the Bahama Blue and Chantilly still. This is crazy, right? I mean, just there's no wrong way to do this. And I think even picking up Plumeria with them, which has some peaches in there, especially these two, I think they complement each other really well. Let's pull the rose. Yeah, I think the coral and the plumeria complement each other really well. And I think the rose blush and the coral do. And I think rose blush and plumeria complement each other well. Just which way you want to go, you know, which color combination speaks to you. Um, I think firm forest and hibiscus go well together. Think about it. When you're admiring a beautiful flower, aren't you admiring the flowers and the leaves together? So think of any of these flower colors being complemented with the leaf color, right? How beautiful is that? <laughs> and I think you could take any of these colors that are flower colors and add that for, for fern forest to it. It's just like looking at the flowers on the tree with the, with the leaves. I know I started getting excited and pulling my own combinations. Did I miss any requests? 
be happy to pull anything together if you have more requests. Um, sea glass and plumeria. Sea glass. Yeah, again, mixing florals with the colors that you would find in leaves, I think it's really fun and different. Definitely a, a contrast, but I think it's really pretty. I don't think there's a wrong combination here, guys. I think whatever speaks to your heart is the combination that works for you. You know, what colors complement your skin tone? What colors are remind you of what's already in your wardrobe what colors would be good pops in your wardrobe sea glass and amethyst yeah we didn't do much with amethyst amethyst this is surprisingly a good neutral still sea glass and amethyst and amethyst goes with everything here look at that so pretty look at that with the, it looks great with the silver side of sea glass it looks great with the turquoise side of sea glass absolutely gorgeous amethyst and the green yes amethyst and fern forest definitely look at that and think of any of these combinations for the princess hibiscus shawl where we do one color for the body and one color for the um, ruffled edging you could do pick one color of any one to one one ball of two of any of these colors and it would just be gorgeous and fun and different the amethyst could also work with the pinks and the corals I think it looks really beautiful going in that direction I think it looks beautiful going in the direction with the blues. Look at that. So you could go with the blues with the amethyst as well. Either of those look really pretty. Very jewel tone going with the blue. It looks great with the looks great with charcoal. And then where's the red? Red million dollar red looks beautiful with these colors too. So million dollar red looks fabulous with classic blue or with amethyst or it looks great with charcoal. And then you could also go in the warm neutrals instead of the cool neutrals. I think the red million dollar red would look amazing with the and any of these colors would. So I'll show you what any of these colors look, how would they would look with chocolate and sandcastle. Look at how rich that is. Imagine doing a color work yoke in those three colors and then picking one of them for the bottom. That would be just gorgeous. So any of these colors now would look good with, any of these darker colors look good with charcoal, but they all look really great with chocolate and sandcastle too. See that? really beautiful but think about it anytime there is a flower there's a green leaf that goes with it and anytime there's a plant there's some sort of sand or earth underneath it too so when you're talking about nature inspired colors you've got your pops of color for your flowers and your fruit but you still have the earthy colors of the greens and the neutrals that are all the things that put the whole palette together look at behind me it's a beautiful lush nature environment behind me but there is a lot more than just pink and yellow back there there are shades of green and there are shades of brown and there are shadows back there so picking up on the charcoal and the sandcastle and the chocolate they actually complement all the bright colors really well in mother nature's own palette <laughs> um, which of these two tops is more beginner friendly? Um, I would say this one, there's no shaping at all in this pattern. It is worked even in pattern the entire time. So the Paloma pattern, I would say is the easiest of the two, not to say that the Paloma is hard though. Whoopsie, there we go. <laughs> 
So no shaping whatsoever within the pattern for the Paloma pattern. So super, super easy. And then not that hard either uh, for, this is a top down raglan shaped yoke, seamless with a stitch pattern. Um, Joe, if you're going to substitute a different yarn weight for a pattern, you have to do a swatch first. I would start with the suggested hook size, which is five millimeter for this one. But if you're not getting the right gauge, you might need to go up or down in hook size after you block your gauge swatch. But it's possible that because that size hook will give you enough give to stretch out your work, you might come close with the same size hook. But I would use that as your starting off point. You'll want to um, see what happens when you block your swatch and go from there. And once you have that information, come back to me and we can figure out, do you go up or down in hook size or whatever? I'm happy to help, but we need a little more information before we can do that. So make a swatch in, that, in this pattern with that yarn, block it, and then tell me how different that measurement is from the pattern's gauge measurement and we'll go from there. Thank you, Tennessee Rose. Thank you, Lisa. Does anybody have any more questions? Yes, I have videos on blocking Lorraine. You can find them here on my YouTube channel. You can search by within the channel. Yeah, this would be gorgeous as a beach cover up and I would just size up. Uh, I would make the next size up. So, or at least do something with zero ease or some positive ease, not negative ease. I showed it to you worn with negative ease today, which is what gives you more of a fitted look, but I would do something larger to make it a beach cover up and so pretty. Uh, this is Moonbeam. Be so sporty bling. Yes, both tops could be made into longer dresses with the right amount of ease in the pattern, yes. Lots of great questions today, guys. If I missed your question for any reason, please feel welcome to come back when the podcast is recorded because then the comments stick and I get notified and we can get to the bottom of whatever you need help with. So uh, please feel welcome to do that as well or email. Um, do I think the Sweet Clara dress would work with different colors? Yes, I do. I think the Sweet Clara dress has several rows to it. There are two rows that make up the shell and then there's a third row that is all chain five spaces. I think that if you did the shells in one color and then the chain five spaces in another color, I think it would be a beautiful striped project. I do. Don't have one with, uh, this one would do that as well. This one has a row of chain five spaces separate from these motifs. If you did the three rows of the motif in one color and then the chain five spaces in a second color, I think that would be an amazing color, way, uh, color work type project as well. Oh, we'll probably need to do some sort of swatching so you can see what I mean. Uh, maybe we'll do that uh, in another podcast because those are patterns, patterns that have a specific motif in certain rows and then a plain row. I think are great candidates for color work, even within a stitch pattern. Because sometimes, what did somebody say? Mermaid and rainbow. Uh, sometimes, sometimes adding combinations of um, striping with lace work is too busy. But there are times when I think it would be very stunning and very bold and graphic. So we'll do a couple of those one of these days so I can show you the difference because there are some great candidates, I think, for doing that. So this is Rainbow Sherbert, which has a soft turquoise and mint green, some soft pink blush, maybe even a soft coral, corally, pinky coral, and then a very pale yellow. That yellow and green really looks like the plumeria back there. And then here is Mermaid which is soft blue and green and turquoise and just really, really soft. Beautiful. Happy birthday, Christine. Yes, that'd be beautiful for a little girl. Yes. 
Any more questions or requests, you guys? I'm happy to help if I can. I will add links to Be So Sporty Yarn, the Paloma pattern, and the Trixie pattern in the video description when we're done today. I also did a blog post yesterday showing all of the new colors of Be So Sporty in one spot, so you can actually see all the colors on the screen at the same time, which I think is helpful. But you can on the uh, yarn page too. Uh, somebody's here from Texas. Hi, Carrie from Texas. Oh, my eyes are feeling better. Yay. It only took about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, note to self, close your eyes before blow drying your bangs to, down to your face. No more mini uh, punches to your eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Yeah, it was really scary, Nora. I didn't know how badly I damaged my eyes at first because it hurts so bad. You know when something hurts badly, you're not sure if you really did something bad or not. Uh, so thank goodness it was nothing. Uh, good morning, Irene. Thank you. Oh, we've got two more birthdays coming up. Melissa and Judy, too. Exciting. Marlon's birthday's coming up, too. He's going to be the big one eight. No, I didn't burn my eyes. My um, bangs hit my eyeballs. I actually had, like, impact. It was crazy. Uh, Mermaid 04 with Sherbert. Yeah, I think we just did that one, but sure. We'll do it again. So this is Rainbow Sherbert, and here is Mermaid 04, and here they are together. I'm going to show both sides of both hanks to give you, try to give you a, as much of a 3D view as I can on a screen. <laughs> Yeah, Marlon will be an adult at the end of this month. Crazy. His birthday's May 30th. And we got another May birthday. Patch Adams is coming up, too. Yeah, the they're, it's breathtaking. That rainbow sherbet is breathtaking. You are right, sunshine. Or sand shell, sorry. Rita's going to be 89 on May 22nd. Wow, happy birthday to you, too. That's so many May birthdays. <laughs> Yeah, Mother's Day's coming up too. Does anybody know if Mother's Day is this coming weekend or the following weekend? I don't remember. I'm sure somebody else knows. This coming weekend, this Sunday. Okay, thank you everybody. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when things are. Nora just turned 50 on April 25th. Wow. Thank you, Sabine. Oh, in Germany, Mother's Day is this Sunday, too. I know in England they do Mother's Day uh, at a different time of year. Interesting to see that Germany does it the same as the U.S. Yeah, lots of celebrating this month. So it looks like we'll be saying happy birthday on lots of days this month. Sounds good. Well, anybody, when it's your birthday, please let us know, because I know not only would I like to wish you a happy birthday, but I know everybody else watching would love to make comments and say happy birthday on your day too. So always feel welcome to share your news, your positive news like that. We love to hear it. Um, Australia Mother's Day is this Sunday too. Cool. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the podcast this morning. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you uh, have friends that might enjoy my podcast, please share any of my videos with them as well, uh, or po podcast or videos. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click that red subscribe button and sign up for notifications so you can get a pop-up notification every time I go live or upload new videos. Uh, we love having you here and would love to see you anytime you feel like joining us. I hope you enjoyed the birds singing this morning. We didn't see much kitty action. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my beautiful tropical backyard, my new patterns and all the gorgeous new uh, colors of yarn. 
If you have any questions, always feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.